welcome to the 11th episode of Season 3 of the Ubuntu UK Podcast. It's Monday the 5th of July 2010 and in this episode we're going to talk about the O2 Juggler and the commitment and the community and we will of course cover the latest news, events, command line live, a bit about Ubuntu and go over your feedback. I'm Laura Cowan and with me this week are... Pointing at me isn't going to work on a podcast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you probably... just as dot dot dot. <laughs> that's not dot 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 that's alan <laughs> <laughs> with me this week are alan pope hello how are you okay how are you fine thank you yeah it's what? nice to have you back thank you it's been a long time isn't it hmm. yeah yeah hmm. i've been doing some fun things with ubuntu um, have you? graphing my power usage Ooh. Ah. yes i got a cable from andy oh, stanford clark via yes. you <laughs> oh yes a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> via me Oh, yeah. Home, well, yes. and via Tony, yeah. And um, I've got it plugged into my uh, current cost thing uh-huh. that measures the power usage of my home. And I've got that plugged into my PC. And it's generating graphs of the last 10 minutes, last 24 hours of you know usage, uh, oh. power usage in the house. It's quite interesting because I can phone up home and say, <laughs> are you hoovering? Good. <laughs> or turn the oven off. <laughs> or or other, other things to hope she reduces the power usage at home. And has it worked? I'm, I'm more aware of it, that's for sure. And if and I've got it auto refreshing on a web page, um, but I'm thinking actually, uh, hmm, and we might come to this when we talk about the juggler. Other ways of presenting this information that's not buried on a web page somewhere. I, I need it to be more apparent and more obvious. This Fair information, enough. but yeah, it's been good fun. Um, yeah, and I, I, actually, I have reduced some of the load because I've switched off my desktop PC and I'm now using a Revo as my main desktop. Which is much less powerful. Much less, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a good idea. Cool. So, Tony, what have you been doing? Uh, do I not get my surname? Tony Whitmore, what yeah, have you been doing? We never say surname. I know, surnames. but Laura decided to introduce herself with a surname and you with a surname. Oh. I just want parity. I don't want to feel like I'm some lesser. He's in a right lesser <sighs> <man. sighs> He hasn't had enough flapjack, that's what it is. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's he's no too, too absorbed in sound kit things. Mm. I updated a bug. On Launchpad. Just you the one. went Just on the Launchpad? One. I went on Launchpad. I had a uh, request Remember, to... Remembered your password. <laughs> <laughs> that time of year. I use Revelation. Um, I went... I had a request saying that a bug I filed against... Ooh, um, 904. Needed updating. Or is it still a problem? Uh, on the MPCL. Graphics driver. Auto detection bug. Ah, yeah. And uh, I managed to find my MPCL. And then I managed to get Lucid on it eventually. With a bit of so tinkering. That, that bug report prompted you to get the hardware out out of the box and yep. and check that it yeah. was a still a valid bug. I try to be a good community member. You're a good man. It's very uh, laudable. That's quite good, actually. Yeah. I normally get the emails, look at them, think, yeah, I should do that. Well, to be fair, it did auto-expire. It is about a month overdue from where it should be. But yeah, no, I got lucid on it, and um, yeah, the bug was no longer there, so I felt quite good about that. Cool. And I played with an iPad. Oh, yes, so did I. Are you yeah. tainted? Is that why you're grumpy? Right, get out. <laughs> Go on, get out. It, it was quite nice. There were some good apps and some not so good apps. It's a computer. It is a computer. I, I, I was um, shown some HD video running on it, and that was quite nice. I could see if you're on the move on a train or something, you might be quite good. But my my um, son works in GameStation, and they're taking them in already as uh, exchanges for games. <gasps> <gasps> yep. How expensive are the games? <laughs> no, no, you, just, you, you give it in, you get a nice big credit note for PlayStations and Xboxes. What, and, and then they sell them secondhand? Hmm? Wow. Really? Wow. That's interesting. <laughs> Welcome to UK Podcast brought to you in association. <laughs> Game Station. And that's Simon Dunville. Yes. And my headphones have unplugged. Two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> what have He's you been doing, Simon? I can't hear myself. What have I been up to? I've iPads. been getting a life. Probably. Really? I've done very little. So well, I was actually. taken aback by that. <laughs> Went silent. You've got to do it. You've got to do it once in a while. Yeah. Uh, it's summer. It's it epic is. out there. It Why is. sit glued to these damn computers? Now I've been out. You can take your laptop, laptop outside. I take my laptop outside. <laughs> okay, that's what I've got an Android phone for, but I try not to use that. Although the wife would tell me different, but um, no, I've been not been. You've been sat in Costa computer. Coffee, haven't you? I have. According to your Twitter account. Because there's Wi Fi in. No, I just use Foursquare. Ah, I'm having okay. Costa in yeah, another town. Or another town. Yeah. No, well. You're all out on the product placements, I know. I oh, know. Check me out. <laughs> yeah, so if anyone would like to sponsor the show, yeah. <laughs> specifically anyone who wants to give us iPads or coffee, then <laughs> yeah. um, Laura, what about you? So I've been writing you? a synopsis for me as a book in the human library, and I'm the female IT geek uh, book. What does that mean? 
Um, Human Library, if you want to have a look, it's humanlibrary.org. Um, it's a way of trying to challenge preconceptions and stereotypes and prejudices. So you think of what, well, you can have a, you have a look at the list of books available and you decide that you want to talk about, talk to somebody about their facial disfigurement or how it, what it's like being a police person, police officer. And you book them out for 45 minutes and then you sit and talk to them and you can ask them questions. And, and basically oh, kind I of, saw this on the TV. Yeah, actually, yes. there was something about it um, last year, I think. And there's like ex-criminals and all kinds of things. Anything at all yeah. where people might have a preconception about you and it can be pretty much anything really so she's the woman who's organizing it is trying to um challenge the idea of what geeks are like in particular female geeks in this case um so i'm going to be a female it geek book at the human library at walmart the world music festival in wiltshire mm, the same day as org which is why i can't go to org and so people can book you for 45 minutes and talk to you about what your life is and how you don't fit the stereotype they probably have in their head yeah well i mean for me i can find out what the stereotype is from them so it's a two-way thing because i get to i might have a preconception about what their preconception is right and it turns out that people don't really think like that or whatever so yeah i just talk to them they can ask me questions and i can ask them questions Sounds pretty cool. Yeah. And there's loads of different books there. So. Is, it, is, it, is there a problem with it being self-selecting and you know, the people who are going to be <clears throat> talking to you are people who are likely to not have preconceptions or likely to be um, aware that they have them and therefore will be more open to not having them in the future? I think everybody's got preconceptions. It just depends how negative or otherwise they are. Um, and I think, yeah, I think, well, it's obviously going to be self-selecting to a point, but... Um, the idea is that you look at the list and go, okay, well, I don't know anything about that or I have a really bad attitude towards accountants or something like that. And you go, okay, well, I'm going to find out what accountants are really like. There is an accountant book on the website. And wow. um, you can go and talk to them and find out that That's really they're really cool. quite normal people. And is it all going to be recorded and available for us to check out later on? No, but I will blog about it. Yeah. Cool. That's a shame. So oh, if they're going on to WOMAD, yeah. they can book you out for 45 minutes? Yes. Excellent. So your number one fan, Neil Wallace, could turn up to Womad and book you out for 45 minutes. What a fantastic yes. idea. <laughs> <laughs> right, on with the show. The telecommunications company O2 recently did something silly, which was to put up a gadget on their website for £50. Um, that's, this then resulted in everybody else in this room um, going all gooey and excited and ordering lots of them. Alan, in particular, I think, managed to order about half a dozen. Uh, three, three, three. Three. One, one of, of which you gave away. Yeah, one of which I gave away at Odd Camp. That's just, okay, very true. Yeah. And Simon bought some as well. I bought two. One from me, one from my boy. Laura stole one of Alan's. Yep. Um, so what are they? What are they called? Joggler. A joggler. Yes. Mm. It's made by a company called Open Peak. Right, okay. And it's a, a PC in a very small box. One, can, can you buy them... From Open Peak directly? No, I think Open Peak sell them to other hardware device manufacturers right. and they sell them to other people who then sell them on. So what is it? It's an EPC without a keyboard. Yeah, it's like a 1.3 gigahertz Celeron with half a gig of RAM, something, something like that. It's yeah. a very nice touch sense, t- uh, touch screen. Oh yeah, it's got a touch screen, yes. It's about this big. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that doesn't work. Uh, well. <laughs> it's the amount of practice on this whole podcast Seven inch screen, thing. isn't it? Yeah. Seven, Seven inches. Seven inch Seven screen. screen. But it's it's really nice. There's no bevel on it or anything. It's just this complete glass screen. So it's, it's like nice. an internet tablet, like a Nokia N800. Yes. And it's got a stand. It's, no, it's, uh, not, ba- it's uh, not battery powered. You have to plug it in. Oh, okay. So you so, have to have it attached to the wall. Not attached to the wall. Attached to the wall is actually a bit tricky. It, I mean, uh, the, it has to be tight. It's because it's mains outlet. Yeah. 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 But um, yeah, it's got a stand, which is actually part of the heat sink. Uh, right, okay. So that's actually attached to the CPU inside. Fair so enough. So that's why you can't easily attach it to the wall because the stand is fixed at like an angle so the thing tilts up at you. So what was attractive about it other than the fact that it was £50? Pounds? <laughs> that was that was a real that's a good opening clincher starter, for me because it? <laughs> it was 100 quid and I need to half price. Well, I'll do half price. Yeah, so it was 100 quid <laughs> and they went down to 50 quid. So and you I bought, bought two. two. <laughs> <laughs> Bargain. Two for great <laughs> okay so why Poor did you why did you, why did you buy one then 
Well, I mean, what was it other than the fact that it was 50 quid? Well, look, I mean, I've got an EPC. If you wouldn't buy one when it was 100, why would you buy one when it's 50? Well, because it's a nice little bit of kit. I've got an EPC. It's great okay. at what it does. So and what, this is a nice little piece of hardware which can do things for you. <laughs> what do, well, this, make it, me it, it, by default, it comes with a, with a Linux-based operating system okay. with a front end that's written in Flash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it, it's got a nice, like, you know, big buttoned interface. It's a right. bit like the um, original netbook. What was Sandros. it? Sandros. No, Sandros. Yeah, the, the EPC. special EPC with big buttons. big buttons, yeah. which is quite nice. Yeah. And well it, it does stuff like news. Song. They they market it as like a replacement for your fridge door, like where you put messages for other members of the family and, and you know, okay. shopping lists and stuff like that and notes and stuff. Um, but you can't take it down to the shops with you. Because you need to no, you it. wouldn't take your fridge door to the shops. <laughs> <right? laughs> I, might, I might take the note from the fridge door. <laughs> <laughs> but then you print it off on your oh, okay. yeah, yeah. This, printer. And, yeah. This is kind of where the problem is, in that the thing itself, as you get it out of the box, there's not a lot you can do with it. Yeah, it's got a few apps, and there's like an mm. app store. With about six thing. apps in it. And you install all of the apps, and there's like, right, okay. The best one is Snake. <laughs> yeah, a game. Oh, what, the game? Yeah. yeah. So who runs the app store? Is that O2? Uh, I, well, yes. it's O2 branded, but it's hosted by Open Peak. If you rummage around underneath, there, there's a bit of a community that's built up around hacking this thing and mm. playing around with it. Um, so it's of perhaps limited use and functionality if you're using the stock firmware. Well, I mean, yeah. kind of. Yeah, I mean, it depends what what you you want out of it. Mm. I mean, I've Could got you... a friend at work who's got one, and his daughter plays the games on it. I'm not sure what longevity that would have. Um, could I've you watch got, TV streamed online or something on it? Not by default. Right. You have you, to install it. There are a lot of apps you can install mm-hmm. that aren't in the app store, but to install them, you've got to SSH into it. <laughs> nice. Which, <laughs> well, that's, all that's because, buttons. yeah, but that's because they, that, that's the hacking community around yeah. it. That's not yeah. okay. the, 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 the O2 provided branded stuff. The O2 provided stuff gives you a radio. Yeah. So if you think nice. of a kitchen radio, yeah. yeah, but it's an internet radio. So oh, okay. you've got all the digital radio channels in the UK, all the local radio stations, and you can set them as favourites and, and all that kind of stuff. It's got an alarm clock, so you could put it beside your bed and have it as an alarm clock comes on, put the radio on, you know, as you would with an alarm clock. Yeah, fair enough. But like 30 quid more expensive than an alarm <laughs> clock. <laughs> and and it's, I guess it looks a bit like a picture frame, so you can presumably do a photo app. You could do that as well. Okay. Uh, if you, It's got a USB port, one USB port. Okay. If you plug a memory stick in that's full of photos, it'll slideshow the photos yeah. and what's the connectivity other than that uh, wireless got wired and wireless oh uh, wired mm. and wireless okay and it's got speakers on the back so it can play music if you plug a stick in that's got mp3s on it it'll play those so Fair now you enough. see why it's quite appealing to the geeks because you can actually do quite a bit with it if you wanted to put it in the yeah. kitchen i mean mine's got a web browser on with latitude running so i can see when i'm on my way home okay so um, you have you hacked yours yeah right so what have you put on yours it's just ubuntu yeah. right Doesn't you, it, how do you do that <laughs> well, I spoke about this SSH. briefly what last week. Do do? No, no, you, oh, yes. you make you. There are a couple of different ways, but essentially, you download the netbook remix. Okay, put it onto a USB stick. Uh, remember not to trash your own um, master boot record, otherwise oh, yes. you're I'm not top right now, yeah. um, And then you just experience. plug it, <laughs> plug it into the um, joggler, uh, boot it up, and away you go. Yeah, by default, okay. it'll boot off of a USB stick that's plugged in. Nice. In, instead of the operating system, it's a bit of a quirky device, though. It's um, it's not got a BIOS. It's got EFI, a bit like a Ooh. Mac. Right, so yeah. it's a bit quirky, and once you get your head around to that, and you have you have to tweak the boot process on the on the usb stick but there right. are pre-built images you can just download and blat onto a usb stick and you're done so i've finally got around to playing with alan's um spare juggler <laughs> spare, 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 juggler. Spare, spare juggler um last weekend was it mm, something like that after quite what a while did, what did you do to it um i did exactly what simon said about um putting a usb bootable ubuntu netbook but the special juggler version mm-hmm. with all the fixes in and got and basically I don't the device itself I don't find that interesting but I quite like to use it for prototyping as a touch screen. I'm um, coming back a little bit to what Alan was saying about displaying current cost oh, yeah. stuff on it. Yeah. Um so I was trying to get it so that it would do a full screen um browser so you could have kind of javascript based things in it um, but so that you can't just drop out of the web browser easily so it just becomes an appliance it's like a kiosk mode kiosk mode basically yeah um didn't you try that with chrome <laughs> i tried that with chrome and you can get into full screen 
from Chrome, but you can't get back out again because you've got mm. to press F11 and you can't get to the on-screen keyboard when it's full screen. <laughs> ah, yeah, that's one of the other things. It's only got one USB port. So if you're booting off the USB stick that's plugged into the USB port, mm. you've got nowhere to plug a keyboard in mm. because it has no hardware keyboard built in because right. it's a touchscreen only. So what most people tend to do is plug a hub, the yeah. USB hub in, and then into that you plug a mouse, a keyboard, and um, a USB stick, and then it becomes somewhat less of a <laughs> useful little device. It's only for setup. Yeah, it's a PC then. But the point was I wanted to just be able to set it up, and then it would be a kiosk without keyboard and things, but I couldn't get the keyboard bit working because I didn't have a hub that would allow the USB boot to work. So can you actually blat the... Uh default install and replace it with Ubuntu using the internal storage? You could, but it's only got one gig of internal storage. Right. So what most people tend to do is use a USB stick because a USB stick could be bigger. Yeah. Um, and also it means that you have a back out in case that you mess the USB stick up. You just pull it out, turn it off, turn it on again, and you boot to the operating system on the right. internal mm. disk. So it's you know, you know you don't completely mess it up <laughs> by blatting. <Potentially. laughs> you just trash your laptop instead. Yeah. Okay, so other than a current cost display, um, any other useful Ubuntu or Linux-based applications? I've actually it? used it for watching TV. I've, watched, I've had okay. it with the BBC News running full screen. And, and because on my desk I have two PC screens hmm. and the juggler fits nicely in between those two screens on the desk so it doesn't obscure the two PC screens, I can have the TV running on that while my PC is doing other stuff and I can even shut down the PC and the news is still going or the radio right. is still going. So it's hmm. Yeah. Helps you multitask. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So other than a little bit of an entertainment station and uh, tracking your other half to find out where they are on the way <laughs> home station. <laughs> well, it, the built-in software lets you send text messages to it. It, 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 it assigns oh, okay. it a mobile phone number. Right. So you, and you get like 50, some free, is 50 it? free text and you can top that up through the website. The software is not great. I mean, mm. it is all Flash-based, but that does mean you can actually download Flash files, like Flash games like you double you get to get them from the web and you can spark them up on the local machine and because many flash games are built to use with the mouse they work well with a touch screen yeah i could see that being insane like particularly kids games or something exactly yeah. yeah so i've downloaded a couple of games off of cbb's website but the problem is because the cpu is a bit gutless it's only a 1.3 gigahertz celeron mm. it can be a bit sluggish especially because it's flash you know no yeah, that's fair enough so if you have got any interesting things that you've done with an O2 juggler or can think of anything that you'd like us to try, and by us, I mean the other three people in this room, um, <laughs> then why not send Dave us... Dave has one too. Dave has one too, excellent. Yeah. Okay. It's so taken we'll me nominate. two months to get around to playing with poppies. Fair enough. Juggler. 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 And uh, send your suggestions into podcast at ubuntu-uk.org. In the news this week... The BBC have joined forces with ITV, Channel 4, 5 and others to produce a platform for streaming TV based on an open framework. The solution, called Canvas, has drawn criticism from Sky and Virgin Media by using licence fee money to help support the project. Sour grapes. Wow. Are you sick of having all these different ways of viewing TV? I mean, obviously this is very UK-centric, but Mm -hmm. it's the same in other countries. Like, every... Every organisation has their own content delivery platform or whatever they want to call it. The thing that annoys me is that they're talking about something that, quote, denied the existence of linear television. Oh. Exactly. (laughs) This is sort of the phraseology that people start to talk about. What should be an interesting technical discussion about a way to deliver TV over your network is is turning into a marketing exercise with people with using lots of buzzwords. So this is to receive... Actually, it says leverage linear. It says leverage linear in this news article. That's it. I'm not talking about this anymore. <laughs> well, I had fun with one of those people, Channel 5, just last night. Claire said to me, I want to watch a TV programme in bed. And I had my laptop with me. I said, OK, let's watch it. And you go to the Channel 5 website and it will only let you view their past programmes if you're using Windows. Oh. Absolutely. And you don't even find that out until you sign up to their website. <laughs> Yeah, which is shocking. And then, and then, when you, when you hit the complain button and you fill in a form, it auto detects your platform and ticks all these boxes and puts crosses where your platform doesn't isn't supported, and it asks you for details that you fill in about why why this is a sucky experience for you. And one of the options is a little drop down where you choose your version of Windows Media Player. Yeah, it's already detected that your platform can't run Windows Media Player. Mm, nice. 
Although, on the plus side, I got a response in about 10 minutes. Telling you to... Install Windows. Nice. <laughs> really? So back to Canvas. No. Well, that's, that's, that's all everybody would need to know about Canvas. That's covered that very thoroughly. <laughs> I just don't have... Oh, if, if that's the kind of stuff... You know, we've got BBC, we've got Flash, ITV, we've got Flash. Uh, Channel 4 uses Flash and YouTube, which is Flash, although maybe mm-hmm. HTML5. And Channel 5 uses Flash and um, whatever this proprietary Microsoft technology. I don't hold out much hope for us being mm. able to view this stuff. True. What I don't get what it is. Is it for viewing it all for your, over a, your internet connection? a unified platform for watching uh, TV programmes on your computer he says that and waves his arms as if I understand what wavy arms means well at the moment if you want to go to the, watch a BBC programme yep. you go to BBC's website mm-hmm. if you want to watch a Channel 4 programme you go to Channel 4's website this is going to be one platform you go to the oh. TV website and it all gets fed into the same yeah. thing and like like TV catch up mm-hmm. brings lots of channels together and Seesaw brings lots of channels together it's a thing like that I don't use any of those I don't use the TV so I don't care <laughs> Am I the only one who watches any telly? Yes. I started watching iPlayer on my phone. <laughs> because you can. Great, just because I can. Try watching Channel 5. Good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> Users of phones running the Linux-based Android operating system are twice as stingy as those using iPhones, apparently. Is this down to the open source effect, or are there just fewer good apps on Android? Well, after taking a pasting last week from <laughs> Poby... Um, Yes, I think it's the it's a problem to do with um, free and open source software. Yeah, is it is it the open source effect? Is it's it the people, free effect? The free effect. Yes. People think that All because it should be free. Yeah, but is it people who if people who are buying the Android phones who do they expect Android apps to be free because they're based on Linux? Are there just I, more free apps? I think you're talking about it from a geek perspective. There are plenty of non geeks who have no idea about the open source and free with the capital F nature of Android and they just use it as a phone, I, th- I think there just are less decent paid apps on Android. Are there non-geeks that use Android phones? Yep. yep. That don't yeah. have a geek connection that com- encourages them you, to? I mean, Android is, is a main street. You can go into a... I know, we, yeah, I know you can get them, but all them. the people I know who've got them are geeks. Yeah, but yeah. most of the people you know are geeks. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the people I know that breathe in and out are geeks. Yeah. So does that mean that um, you're only you're only going to get decent software if you pay for it? That's what you suggested. Uh, not really. You can get ad supported software, and then you take the adverts out if you pay for it. Mm-hmm. But I think there's less of that high quality paid. So- I mean, well, I've got an Android phone, and I've only bought one app. What was that? Uh, a Twitter client. I bought a Twitter client for my Nokia. It's the only software I've bought in a long time. I bought a game. My first purchase <laughs> for my Android phone. <laughs> my phone doesn't have a store. Oh, Aww. nobody Yours changes. Yours is barely a phone, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> he can make calls and send text messages. A rotary dial on it for goodness sake. only mobile. Oh, my God. Yes. Compiz, the spinny cube software, has been rewritten in C++ in its new release, version 0.9.0. Why? I have no idea. What was it written in before? C. So they've just added two pluses and it's better? <laughs> yeah, of course. That must make it better. <laughs> I think they've merged a few projects done. as well. They've brought in some stuff yeah. from other Compiz. Uh, Nomad and Compiz++ have uh, been merged yeah. into Compiz. And they've dropped Compiz Fusion, I Yes. Think. Yeah. So when does this hit Ubuntu and the like? I think there's a PPA for it already, I think. Yeah, Maybe. but non-PPA? Is it just sort of rolled in kind of? I'm not sure, actually. It'd probably be in 1010, might it? Yeah, I'd have thought mm. so. Well, we've just had the freeze from importing from Debian. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, mm. so for, for Maverick. Yeah. But that doesn't stop stuff getting in, if there's a you know, a good reason for having it. And wow. spinny cubes go all the way. Oh, yeah, totally. There's a business case for those. <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's a surprising number of people who really love the spinny cube. I love the spinny cube. Builds of Ubuntu and Android for HTC's HD2 phone have been released for testing. Yeah, it's HD quite a funky two? phone. It it's, is. It's a Windows phone. It is. At the moment, it is. Mm. I saw one in Monaco. Yeah. Get you. Uh, <laughs> when we <laughs> were in shopping. Monaco, shopping around. And it, the hardware looks absolutely lovely. I was a bit smitten. It does look a gorgeous Where phone. Where did you yeah. see it? In, 
uh, uh, it's one of the shops in Monaco, in oh. that big expensive shopping centre where ah, we yeah. wandered around and couldn't afford with anything. <laughs> yeah, walk back out again with a carrier bag. Yeah, that's yeah. it. I stole that as well. <laughs> um, but no, the hardware it looks absolutely switch. It's slim. I mean, it, uh, the the screen is massive and the the, the bezel is tiny. It looks really really. It nice. is a gorgeous looking thing. It hasn't got a rotary dial. It hasn't on got it. a rotary dial really? on it. And is, this, is this you coming into the 21st century looking? Although you were looking at a Windows mobile I was looking, phone. I didn't know it was Windows at the time. I assumed it was it was Android because you know. Oh, because it's, it's HTC, so they yeah. put their their thing on the front of it, and it, they all look the same, really. Yeah, mm-hmm. I thought it was HTC. I assumed it was Android, and it was only when I look, looked it up on the internet later that I realised it was Windows. It was only a display model, so it didn't have a real display on it. But if I was to drop my phone and smash it into a thousand pieces accidentally, I'd probably look at that one. Even though it's a Windows mobile phone? Well, if I could get Android and a, or Ubuntu to run. Right. LightSpark, a modern, efficient, and open-source Flash Player implementation has reached a version 0.4.2, which includes support for H.264 videos on YouTube. The good news for Ubuntu users is that there's a PPA. Mm. What's H.264 videos? Codec. Video codec. Oh. It's used by YouTube. It's used by lots of things. It's a... It just means you can play YouTube. Yeah. It's yeah. just video. It's not like a full Flash play, a full flash environment, is it? Uh, not like for using it on websites and things. Using like games and stuff like yeah. that. I don't know, actually. I've not tried it. I, th- I think it says it's just, just it, video. It's just for doing video, is it? Oh, and it drops yeah. to Ganache for anything other than video, doesn't it? It can So you can have both LightSpark and Ganache installed. Oh, right, okay. And it drops to Ganache for the other stuff. There are some events coming up. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> That's better. <laughs> The second Ubuntu mm. User Day will on, be on July the 10th in the Ubuntu Classroom IRC channel from 9.45 UTC until 3 o'clock UTC. That says 3 o'clock. I don't know if that's 3 o'clock in the morning or 3 okay. o'clock in the afternoon. It's all, some, it's all on one day, it says. It's all on one day. Cool. On July the 11th, aimed at new users of Ubuntu, Ubuntu User Day will include classes on installing and setting up Ubuntu, a partitioning 101, command line basics, information about the kernel, and much more. You don't need to be around for the whole day to join in, so stop by. A complete list of courses is available and can be found on the wiki, and we'll post a link in the show notes. Mm. Information about the kernel for new users. <laughs> ah, now, that might be interesting for like uh, people testing. I think this is something that JFO is doing that we, would, we talked to him about in our interview. It's Ubuntu Developer Week again from the 12th to the 16th of July. You can learn about developing on Ubuntu, packaging, the relationship between Ubuntu and Debian, uh, improving Ubuntu, and loads more. Yeah, there's loads of sessions on. More IRC stuff. Yes, all on IRC. It's busy next week with the National City Learning Centre's conference running in Leeds in the UK. And speakers include BBC tech reporter Roy Kefflin Jones, Canonical's Matt Barker, and Ogcam's very own Laura Tchaikovsky. Hmm. So, what are they doing there? I think from memory she's talking about women in open source, but yes. that, that could be a lie. Yes, yeah, she's doing a, a <laughs> section on the book to women. Okay. We're going to do um, OrgCon. I say also, now with new confirmed attendee, Alan Pope, OrgCon on the 24th of July. Yes, that's right. You're going on to it. Where is it? Uh, it's in London. It's on Saturday the 24th of July, and yes, there are going to be people there, including Corey Doctorow and others. Tom Watson, the Tom MP. Tom Watson, yes. And you. And well, I, I'm not speaking right now. I'm just no, attending. You're going along. Yeah. So, if you want to go along and sit behind Alan in a talk and pre-chew my food, possibly rub <laughs> his ears or something. <laughs> Sorry, private joke. <laughs> I'm good. Not that private anymore. <laughs> <laughs> It's time for a command line love. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a little while. This one was sent in by one of our listeners, Chris Blow. And it's... Oh, let me set a scenario for you. You know when you're at the command line on a Linux system and you want to uh, create a directory and then change into that directory to perform some other function? Helps me all the time. You know how long it takes to do that? Yep. It must, you know, because you have to type in Mukta and then the name of the directory. And then you go CD and then the name of the directory. You know, there's, I it's mean, seconds. If, if it is a drag, if you were to do, if you add up all the time you spent doing that when you could be doing something else, that would be quite a lot, perhaps five, ten minutes a year. Um, but now there's a little good function that's on this lifehacker.com page, which we'll link to in the show notes, whereby you can create the directory and change into it in one go, thus saving yourself valuable key presses. That's amazing. It is. Uh, it's, a, it's a bash function that you stick in your .bash RC file that literally creates the directory, and then you move into, into it, it, called so, MUK CD. 
So it serves you three characters, a space, and a tab completion. Yeah, and your joints, of course. And maybe multiple tab completions, because it could be you're making a directory that's multiple directories deep. Oh, that's true. And it'll make all of them, and then you can CD straight into them. Mm. That's true. That would be cool. Actually, that's quite neat. That is quite good, actually. Okay, I I retract my sarcasm. (laughs) There you go. Does it work with spaces? Yeah, it looks like it will be. The example he gives it is, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, without any slashes. Yeah. Well, cool. if you've got a command line love you'd like to see us cover, why not send it in and we can be sarcastic about that too. <laughs> well, Tony, can Thanks, Tony. It brings so much to the show. Right. I thought we'd talk about community. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a wonderful thing, the community. Mm. Johnny goes on about it all the time. Oh, really? <laughs> and it is. And it's great. And we all put in a load of work... Um, being around each other and getting things done and Mm -hmm. making ubuntu wonderful but what happens when i can't be bothered when you run out of steam yeah happens to everybody you three will and david would would uh, tell everybody about the fact that um towards the end of the year i normally go off and off and say right i'm leaving i'm not gonna (laughs) (laughs) Um, it's not necessarily burnout but it's the beginnings of I yeah. don't think that's unique to you. I no, think, it isn't. I think, uh, no, I think everyone goes through of, it. A lot of people get that. But mm. within um, within the signed up Ubuntu community, those that have been to Launchpad and signed the code of conduct, there's a little bit in there that says, you know, when you've had enough, you should be allowed to just walk away without any comeback whatsoever. Well, it's not necessarily about comeback. It's more well, if you if you no, want to leave, you I agree. leave. I but agree. Just hand over nicely, so you yeah. don't just you don't just you know, shut down your email account, delete your Launchpad <laughs> sure. account. And, you know, any, what what it's more concerned about is, let's say, for example, you were hosting this podcast on, and yours was the only server that hosted it. Yep. And you decide I've had enough and you just pull the plug and walk away. <laughs> then, yeah, that a wouldn't be a, way to go. yeah, that wouldn't be a nice way to do it, you know. Mm. Okay. So there are ways for people to get out of the community, but are people... Dropping out. I mean, if, but you have to renew a membership every couple of years, is it? Um, well, uh, membership in terms of Ubuntu membership. Yes, Ubuntu membership. There, if if you are an Ubuntu member, hmm. so you've gone through the, um, you've been doing work for Ubuntu for a while, yeah, and you've attended either in the past the community council meeting, or you've attended one of the regional membership board meetings, yeah, or a developer membership board meeting if you're a developer inclined rather than loco community yeah. inclined. Um, then, yeah, you get membership and you get your Ubuntu email address, you get a subscription to Linux Weekly News. Mm-hmm. And then in two years' time, Launchpad will send you an email and say, renew it. And you just click a button. All right, okay. That's it. Right. You're renewed. You don't have to reattend. Um, you don't have to take the Pledge of Allegiance again. No, you don't. Right, you don't okay. have to sacrifice your firstborn child or anything like that. In which case, if it's that easy, are there lots of people who don't do it? What's the, the, the burnout rate? Don't do what? Don't. Re- don't press renew, the button. Yeah. There are some, some who, some people who, I mean, being that I'm on the CC and we own the Ubuntu members group, I see the emails when people drop off the Ubuntu members group. Right. So I, and I see when uh, people renew as well. Okay. So, so I kind of have an idea of when people drop off mm. and some people drop off because they leave the project and they've, maybe they've switched to Debian and they're contributing yeah. to Debian or maybe they're contributing upstream or maybe they're just you know, taking some time off. Okay, so I don't think that's that's why I was curious, because I'm trying to work out if there is a problem, because you're making a commitment to, to continue to contr- contribute to, in this case, Ubuntu, but to whatever, you know, Floss Project or whatever. And if there is a, a, a proportion of people who, who get going and then sort of drop off quite quickly, perhaps within the first couple of years, is there a problem there? Is it Are we asking people to make too much commitment? Or should people be I don't, think anybody is. I don't think anybody's asking anybody to put in any commitment. It's down to the individual, isn't it? Well, we sometimes ask people to, you know, well, we well, we, we ask favours of people. You know, we say, you know, could you could you take on this this project or this team? In fact, you asked me a question last week on RC. You asked me if I'd do something, and at the time I thought, yeah, I could do that. But I thought, do you know what? I'm really not at that point at the moment because if I take this on, there's a commitment. And I'm not prepared mm. to give the commitment right mm. now because, sure, I can do an initial order of something, of T-shirts, for example. But then I'm going to have to set it up so that, that can roll on. And, mm-hmm. that's, and just right now, I'm just not into doing commitment. So 
It's all about the sort of the guilt as well. And because it would be really easy to do. And and to be honest, pretty trivial. But you can you can that guilt word, you can you can be made to feel a bit guilty sometimes yeah. when you know, when you unsubscribe from something or when you when you leave a forum or leave a mailing list or leave a yeah. a group or a team. You you feel bad. Or or flattered. Perhaps the, the the flip side is to flatter to take on responsibility for something you're not really that interested in, but because I don't know somebody you you respect has asked you to because think about doing it, you might think, oh yeah, okay, I'll do that, and yes, you know, so I'm, I'm really pleased that so and so has asked me to take on this little bit of responsibility. Mm. It is, it is but then your heart's not really in it. Yeah, and it's if you'd make an active decision to not be part of it anymore by unsubscribing, that's one thing. But if you just let it carry on and you press the button. But you're only half with it because, mm. as you say, you're flattered to be part of it, but you can't really commit. That's, that's a well, problem for everybody. Then we do well. have that. We do have people who it's fairly obvious they got their membership two or three years ago. And mm. when the renewal mail comes around, they hit the button, whether they're active in Ubuntu or not. Um, I don't think we're looking to fix that. I don't think we're looking to try and, you know, say, well, you know, you're, you're still a member, you should be doing something. But for some groups we are. For loco teams, we're renewing now. And we're saying your your team of people is approved, therefore you get some extra benefits as a part of, as a part of being a, an approved loco team. Mm. Now what we're saying is um, we're going to have a, a, another look at you in – two years time and if you're no longer active then we'll make you unapproved and as such you don't get those benefits and and so it is possible for people to you know step back as individuals but also for whole teams to step back and wind down if they need to Hmm. but one of the things about the open source or you know, certain certain projects within something like Ubuntu. Ubuntu's got so much momentum, you hope it would carry on if any one individual dropped out. And That's it, the idea, yeah. But a lot of the smaller parts of that project, that isn't the case. It does often still rely on one sort of key person, and if that person drops out, an initiative stops. And mm-hmm. um, you can look at things like screencasts. It's probably a, a, a great example. So when you find you haven't got time to make any screencasts, there isn't a whole heap of other people yeah, generating that, them as well. But that's not necessarily... Um that that specific example, so I started the screencast team mm. and it consisted of a bunch of people on a mailing list. And from my part, I probably didn't manage that team well enough to put in place people and the redundancy so that if I step down, other people can, you know, take my place. Yeah. And that's, that's a good example of where that didn't happen. Mm. And And there are other teams where that clearly has happened. So people have been able to step down from the website team or from, you know, translation teams and they, people disappear. Maybe they're busy with um, family. Maybe they've got, you know, bereavement in the family that takes them away. And there's no way we'd tell them, you know, you should feel guilty because you're, you're being taken away for some family bereavement. That, that, That would be outrageous. So, you know, we, we should, we should cater for people leaving or, you know, for their, for their, um, contribution to wax and wane you know as and when you know they're available because they are volunteers i think one way to help in this situation is um is to get back with the people i'm not convinced that online communities work that well without you actually getting together with the people Mm. after odd camp i was on a massive high because all weekend i had a fantastic weekend with my friends and with other people and like-minded people Mm. And I was bouncing all over the internet for the next couple of weeks saying, come on, what's the next meet? When's the next meet? It was fantastic. And then slowly, 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 nobody wants to play anymore. Everybody's gone <laughs> back to their keyboards. Say that. It's funny you should say that because that, I, I, I believe that's true as well. Um, for example, in Linux user groups in the UK, yep. those Linux user groups which are geography-based, so mm-hmm. one that's based around a county or a town, when they meet up, they seem to be stronger than, mm. for example, a... Um, a lug that's based around um, some other theme, like a common interest, yeah. or um, you know, some something like um, the youth uh, lug, or the army forces lug, mm-hmm. or the um, LGBT lug, or yeah. you know, yeah. they're, they're they're built around a theme rather than a, geogra- a geography, mm-hmm. and as such, because they then partly because they never meet up, that does fall apart mm-hmm. somewhat. 
and I can I completely agree. You know, when you meet up with people like us, we meet up every two weeks, roughly, yeah, and sometimes not as often as that. And for example, when we, me and Dave went off to UDS, and we come back, and it's a bit stunted and we're we're trying to get ourselves going again because none of us have seen each other for like a month or more so just doing it online isn't enough is it but that's difficult because you know if you're if you're the translation team and you're translating ubuntu into spanish okay there's going to be people in spain but there's going to be people in other countries as well and nowhere near you geographically but happen to speak spanish Mm. not every not every team can do that yeah um one of the things that i think canonical are working on um, which might help is um, voice chat. Canonical internally are using um, Mumble, Mumble yeah. to do voice conferencing. And I know Dave is a big proponent of, you know, when you've got a problem, pick up the phone and mm-hmm. talk to people. Yep. And so if teams could talk to each other a bit more via tools like Mumble, yep. then that, that might, might actually solidify the team and mm-hmm. make it less likely to people drift and fall apart and so on. Mm. Is it the um, if you have a big argument, or if you, if, you, if you have an argument on the internet, it's always a big argument because people, especially don't. if it's in capital letters, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> lots of exclamation marks. Mm. But, but the whole whole kind of you know, people don't back down; they don't want to admit that they're wrong, um, and they sort of go off for a strop either for a substantial amounts of time or at least you know a short amount of time. But that tends to happen a lot less if you're face to face in a meeting with somebody. It's harder to tell them that you disagree with them in a nasty aggressive way because you but can part- see the little face just crumple but partly because <laughs> it shouldn't get to that stage if you're if you're if you're seeing them yeah. more regularly the the chances that you're going to be typing angry text at someone <laughs> you know is is much less because you're looking at them you know do you know what i mean mm. although yeah. you know in, well, in, in mm. computer communities that's less likely because you could be in the same room and still type angry text to each other <laughs> i'm doing it right now <laughs> oh yes so i, I don't th- i don't think we're doing that much wrong. I think there's certainly some teams that could do things better. Sure. And individuals need to figure out for themselves what their level of contribution is. I don't think we can, we can enforce anything. I don't think we can, we, I don't think we should enforce anything. Yeah. It's important not to feel guilty. I think that's the important thing. And don't make people feel guilty as well. If they can't do it or don't want to do it or just need a bit of a break. But some people have difficulty finding that balance, don't they? They, they perhaps deep down know that you they're look, doing too are you much. Are looking at me? I'm not looking at anybody. <laughs> I'm quite blatantly staring at a plate know. of flapjack. Um, and not a plate of flapjack. The empty plate. Um, but there are people who, who don't know the boundaries or, or don't realise that they are perhaps overdoing it until mm. something breaks you know, yeah. some, well, some I, I major had that. crisis. I, I was subscribed to just about every Ubuntu mailing list and the f- fire hose of mail coming in mm. and replying to mails on like every single Ubuntu mailing list and mm. it just kind of got too much. So I've unsubscribed from all the teams that I'm not really a core contributor of and now I'm only on like half a dozen mailing lists mm. and that and I, I find I contribute I contribute better to a smaller number of teams sure. than yeah. trying to spread myself ridiculously thin across mm-hmm. lots of things. What made you realise that you were getting overwhelmed with information then? I was getting annoyed with people. Uh, I, I was getting frustrated and annoyed and angry and cross right. and, and and took a step back and thought, I, want, I actually thought I want to quit Ubuntu completely. I was that far that I thought, this isn't for me. I've had enough of these people. And then when I take a step back and look at my inbox and think, actually, it's just there's too much information. Mm. And I just need to like wind it back a little bit. And so I quit a whole bunch of IRC channels because I was sat in like 50 IRC channels, yeah. most of which I never read. And when I switch to a channel and I see a keyword like screencast or odd camp or something, and then I'll type a few lines and then I won't say anything there for another week. I think, well, what's the point of, you know, is there actually a value add I'm prevent- providing there? Yeah, yeah there is. So, there is. Because well, you're a helpful bloke. But the problem is that it just gets to be too much. Just yeah, and then work. I don't get anything done for yeah. myself, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And uh, there's a world out that door, which is where I've been for the last two weeks. And there's a family to look, you know. Should we all go and live in the woods? <gasps> Dump these oh, computers. I'd love to. With actually, your Android no, phone. As long as I could Android phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hand, too well. Hand crank charger in your life. <laughs> He spend his whole day cranking. <laughs> I read the uh, O'Reilly book, Time Management for System Administrators. Must I've be got about that book. I've not read it yet. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe now you've got all those I lists. I am not have time. kidding. I really do have that book. It's next to my bed me. and I've not read it yet. <laughs> and whilst a lot of it is sort of in th- terms of the context of work and balancing you know, activities at work and stuff, it does have some very good tips about you know, leaving work behind when you go home or at least sort of saying, 
you know, I'll do an hour tonight or two hours tonight, but then I'll go out tomorrow night and go to the pub or go have a meal with friends or just spend time with the family or whatever, you know, limiting the number of places you're getting information from. I'm subscribing from a mailing list every month. You know, to keep, just keep the list down um, until you get to the point where you really, really, really can't quit it mailing is, lists. It is difficult as a, as a contributor in uh, in your spare time, you know, inverted commas, spare time. Hmm. Um, if you've got a day job that isn't Ubuntu, you know, you're a normal, yeah. average person, day job like m- all of us do. Yeah. And then in the evenings and weekends, you spend a bit of time doing, you know, contributing. Then yeah. it's difficult knowing when <laughs> when to stop and when, you know, how much time is enough. Because, you know, if you've got meetings in an evening or uh, and you've got to prep for those meetings or then you think, oh, actually, yes, I've got to file that bug. And, and me, it, it kind of gets for, on top of you. For me, but it, it's a case of not feeling that pressure. Like this... Um, this bug that I talked about in the intro about this graphics problem, mm-hmm. I, I had the email to do it. I left it in my inbox. I thought, oh, I'll get time. I'll, I'll have a look at that. I'd quite like to do that and contribute. But I didn't let it get to me that I hadn't done it. And it wasn't itching away at me to make sure I did get it done yeah. by the time it, it closed. I, I sit in, I, I really think very carefully before joining another IRC channel. Because I know that my information flow, I try to keep less than 10. See, he's read the book. I have read the book. But you have it, but, mastered the addiction. But, but it's, it, uh, I, I genuinely think carefully about adding another thing in because I know that it'll become something I want to keep up with. Mm. Yeah. Well, you see, that, that's very true because I, as part of my cull, I got rid of IR, a load of IRC channels. I unsubscribed from a whole bunch of mailing lists. And also, I went through all my bug mail from Launchpad from all the bugs that I was subscribed to. Yeah. And there was loads there that, yeah, okay, some of them affect me now. Some of them affected me two years ago and, uh, and people are still commenting on how this thing's broken. And I'm thinking, what value am I getting from that? So I unsubscribed from a whole bunch of, um, a whole bunch of bugs. And incidentally, I found a bug unsubscribing. I must file that. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's just a spiral. Yeah, because, yeah. Uh, you know, there's you a in. bug in the unsubscribing from bugs thing. But, yeah, I I agree. I need to, you know, and and everyone, if if you're feeling overwhelmed, reduce the overload. I like the um, blog post that you ex- you quoted once, Alan. Um, somebody saying that it wasn't that they didn't have time; it's just that they weren't prioritizing things now. Oh, that's yeah. Matt Zimmerman wrote Matt a blog Zimmerman. post. I think it was about um, when people ask, um, "Can you do this for me?" and you say, "I didn't get time to do it." Yeah. It's actually, I didn't want to do it. I, I, I yeah. chose not to do that, it. Yeah. Nah, keeping that in mind always helps me because I just go, yeah, there's nothing wrong with saying, I just can't do that. Mm. Yeah, no is a magic word yeah. that I find it difficult to say. I like Simon's idea of going and sitting outside and enjoying the, enjoying the weather, particularly in the summer. Nobody's no, gonna... you see, I tried that on Friday. I went out with Alan Lord and Alan Bell from the Open Learning Centre. Yeah. We were sat in a pub, <laughs> drinking beer, and then all yeah. three of us get our phones out and start playing around with Android phones. Could it possibly yeah. have been the company you were with? <laughs> yeah, it could be. Yeah. But yeah, even then you're outside, you're chatting, you're interacting with people. Mm. Um, my mum got us a garden parasol so that I could sit outside with my laptop. Don't do it. <laughs> That's where these these pixel chi displays that the OLPC has. Yeah. We don't want them. We don't want them because then we'll be outside and using our laptops outdoors. That's wrong. I, f- I think if you if you feel your brain getting too overactive, then you know it's time to go and do something else. Yeah. If you can't get to sleep because you're thinking about that bug that you couldn't quite fix or no. work out what was going on, then too much. Yeah, that's absolutely. that's kind of the balance point between Go being a, a normal <laughs> person and being a serious hardcore geek where you stay up all night just regardless yeah i mean i i have my weekends where i do a saturday you know and i'll geek out for the saturday and i feel really good because i'm enjoying it and i'm playing around with technology and that's one of the things i like to do but then i make sure i draw the line and then I have you know the evening off or the following day and go do something else and it's all right once in a while, but if it's every every weekend or weekend or every evening... It's addiction. It's yeah, simple it addiction. Is, yeah. It's just mm. mastering that addiction, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I'd be interested to know how other people cope with this and yeah. how they and how people have left communities and how they've rejoined and... Yeah, absolutely. I read um, an online article by a woman who's a gaming geek, and I don't know, I can't remember her name, but she considers herself a geek, and she was asked what defines a geek. And she talked about how she'd been growing up and she was into games or computers or something, really, really into it. She had lots of friends who weren't geeks, but she grew up through her teenage years not knowing anything about makeup. And then she happened to do some kind of video, or she was on something like GMVT, 
GMVT, GMTV. <laughs> and then for that, she suddenly realised she didn't know anything about makeup. And so she went home and learned everything there was to know about makeup because she's <laughs> a geek and she has right. to do that. Yeah. And so now she's the expert among all her girlfriends. Right. Um, and it's that kind of, I think that's probably more likely to lead to people burning out because that kind of... Is that an obsessive personality absolutely. trait though Full rather than... Yeah. than but yeah. but we, if it's a, lot a of us have that. thing... Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Send us your tips on what you do to keep balance or have you, have you failed and flown off the handle at some point? And gone and, you know, told people to go away in not so nice language. Or, what subject did you learn obsessively? Like yeah. Makeup. <laughs> <laughs> and send us your feedback to podcast at ubuntu uk.org. It's time for the bit about Ubuntu. Oh, yes. I was going to, I was expecting you to say something wrong. And so I can contradict you were ready you to very call, quickly. Yes. Excellent. And then I just can't, oh yes. Oh, He's excellent. given up. He is given in. He is. It has like beaten you all down. <laughs> yeah. Although paved. actually I should have called it ecosphere. <laughs> yes. So I was, I was wrong. You to do. Yes. Yeah. Don't call it that. Okay. Or do it. And then I can tell you off for doing it. Okay. It's, it's time called. for the ecosphere. No, don't do that. Oh. See, there's a bit of shtick. Oh. I said shtick. What's first in the bag of eco things? There's a bit. Mm-hmm. It's um, <laughs> it's a bit about Ubuntu. Just a little bit. Ubuntu Weekly News has hit its 200th issue, and it's still going strong. Excellent. Yeah, Mark Shuttleworth blogged about it, and um, yeah, there was it's every week. Really? Yeah. Do you read it? Some of it. It's okay. quite long, isn't it? The, the posts that. Yeah, it's quite comprehensive, bulky, and it, it, it covers stuff like um, you know Ubuntu in the news and developments in you know packages that are new and stuff like that but it's also got summaries at the very end of security updates and mm. and uh, bug numbers and all that kind of you know stats raw stats at the bottom but it's got you know interesting stuff in the middle news stories and they promote us as well sometimes yeah they do when i ask them to <laughs> <laughs> no they do a- a- amber grainer who looks after it at the moment um uh, because it's had a number of people who've looked after it mm. over the years um she's um very good and she's been subscribing and making sure she pastes in details about our show okay. and other podcasts as well and, you know, blog posts. General sort of Ubuntu weekly news things. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've ripped some stuff from them before <laughs> now for the show. So, you know, it works both ways. Yeah. A new announce-only mailing list has been set up uh, to publicise jobs at Canonical and within the community and partner arena. That's a good idea. Nice. Yeah. So we've got the, like, Linux jobs list on the lug.org.uk. And now we've got Ubuntu jobs on the lists.ubuntu.com. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so that means presumably the recruitment drive is going to continue at a reasonable pace. Yeah, it seems that way. There's loads of jobs listed on their website. Hmm. There usually is, you know, a big chunk of... Some of them have actually been there for quite some time as well. Yeah. Um, so it's quite interesting. Can't find they're... the right people. Can't find the right people. They're picky. Mm. They really? only recruit the best. Apparently so. Ding! Which is why none of us work for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it didn't work like that for Lug Radio, did it? <laughs> Actually, one of the first posts um, to that mailing list is an interview with Ack <laughs> about yeah. what it's like to work at Canonical. Cool. Josh Shields has released a new version of his Grub theme, which mirrors the Ubuntu default logon screen for kernel selection. Yeah, it's quite nice, isn't it? Yeah. So, you know, the, the grub screen where you normally see a bunch of text that's got, like, Ubuntu 9.10 and then the kernel version. Hit tab, and it's been a long yeah, time yeah. since I saw that. That kind of... Yeah, because we hide it now, yeah. don't we? You have to mm. press a button to see it. But even then, it, it's it's not pretty. Mm. And he's made a nice screen that looks just like the logon screen with, like, the grey and the logo at the top and a list and the purple background and stuff. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very nice. sweet. It's pretty. Well, I mean, you don't see it if you've only got Ubuntu on there, but if you're dual booting or have more than one version dual of Ubuntu... Booting? How dare you? Yeah, you can dual boot different versions of Ubuntu. Or Ubuntu and Linux Mint. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Or Ubuntu and Debian or whatever. Um, or but yes, yeah, so you would now see the like the proper Ubuntu. <laughs> I like it. It's really nice. Yeah, it is sweet. It has it's a really little good. bit of polish because it is one of those things, black, uh, black background, white text. People go, oh, what is that? Oh, I'm on a mainframe. Yeah. <laughs> the Open Invention Network has announced its associate member program and has recruited Canonical as its first associate member. So what's, what's the OIN? What do they do? Uh, they are the, um, one of the patent portfolio organisations. I think that people can contribute patents to, or sorry, companies can contribute patents to and say, we're going to contribute to these to them. We won't, to the pool. We are not going to sue open source projects who are using these patents, I believe. And do uh, Canonical have any patents to contribute to the pool? Do you know? I don't know. 
I've not followed their patent policy. Hmm. But um, hmm. maybe that's why they're only an associate member rather than a, a full member. Um, so it's companies who uh, sort of work with and support Linux, so maybe they want to be protected against potential lawsuits from some of the bigger members who are sort of IBM, NEC, or NEC, even Novell, Philips, Red Hat, and Sony. It's time for your feedback. Todd Norris, Ian Barton, and Phil Thompson emailed in about web content filtering with Ubuntu. They all use OpenDNS. Ian also told us about eBox, which provides a web-based configuration panel for Squid, Dan's Guardian, and more. Man America also told us about the parental control GUI, and Shane Fagan, who was developing a simple parental control app, let us know about Gnome Nanny, which does much of what is plan what he planned. Mm. Yeah, you were talking about this last time, weren't you, Alan? About your um, policy: do you filter? Do you block for your young kids as they get a bit older and get a bit mm. more onto the net? And it seems to be quite a popular thing to think about. And yeah, well, the, about I mean, the Open DNS, the Open DNS Family Shield project is a is a, a way of blocking access to websites by basically mucking up the DNS entries for all the dodgy sites, oh. um, and setting them to, to something non-existent or whatever. Okay, so you just get a, a blank page or a warning or an I, error. Yeah, I've not tried it. I assume you get a, a blank page or, or right. a, 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 I assume you get a blank. something other than the, the message, page. Yeah, that something was other than, than you know. Drug of course, usage the problem or, with that is you're outsourcing it to someone else, and you're dependent yes. upon their decision of what is good and bad content. True. So if they decide that pages about uh, Tiananmen Square or yes. pages about abortion should be not seen. Yeah. You know, that might not fit with your decision of what is vetoable and, and True. good. On content. the flip side, it is, it's very easy because you're just changing your DNS entry on your router. So yeah, absolutely. Job done. Yeah. So for a minimal effort solution. Yeah, it almost like z- near zero effort. Yeah. yeah. Even the sort of effort you were prepared to go to. <laughs> <laughs> well, but is it, yeah. But one of the things we were talking about was the GUI side of things and, and not having to, to muck around with squid config and all that sort of stuff. So it sounds like there are actually some projects to uh, introduce that a little bit more. Yeah, readily. the no Nanny one looks interesting. It's um, a cool name. Yeah. Simon Benny emailed to tell us uh, all about the new government website. At OGCAMP, there was a lot of discussion about the Digital Economy Act. You might be aware of the new government website by Nick Clegg, where people can nominate laws they'd like to see repealed. And I present to you the Digital Economy Act, and there's a link, which is linkpot.net slash fairway. Yeah, this is trying to get, it's like the old um, the uh, government website where you have... It's, uh, it's a brainstorm almost, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, a, a list of suggestions of which um, acts you want to see repealed. Mm, and about eight people at least have nominated the Digital <laughs> Economy Act. <laughs> Including Jim Kellogg from yeah. the org. But I, I was a little bit confused when I read that because I couldn't see what I was supposed to do. No, there doesn't seem to be an obvious Me so, Too button. Everybody's submitting their own things. So but yet, was, at, the yeah. bottom of, at the bottom of them, there's a post basically saying, this seems to be a duplicate of X, Y, and Z. There's yeah. not, there's not, but they should have used Launchpad, basically, because <laughs> then they could merge them and they could ticket them and then people could... Yeah, you mean an idea user. pad or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, idea yeah, storm or something. It hasn't got as perhaps the full features as some of the more, more sophisticated So systems. that's a good design by the government, then, because you can't actually well, do what you want to do. It says Nick Clegg did it. Yeah, he's up like he's, 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 uh, the he's actually uh, a he's Django, up till four in the morning. He's, he's a Django developer. <laughs> <laughs> Chatting with Django. Syl. How the hell do I get it to do this? <laughs> How do you make it recognise on no Chrome? And <laughs> Can't get CouchDB to work. <laughs> Antigrata. Uh, anti, anti, oh God! Why can't people just have normal names on Twitter? Call him Frank. And John sent us a DM on Twitter. <laughs> Your interviews typically need to have better planned questions and to be shorter and better edited. However, UDS interviews were a huge improvement. The deep irony being, Thanks, Frank, at UDS, there was zero planning. Me and Dave walked around on the very last day of UDS God, with, oh my God, with, got to get yeah, some with Tony's handheld recorder and without any planning whatsoever, just walked up to people and went, will you be interviewed by us, please? <laughs> and they went, uh, yeah, all right. And in some cases, uh, no. And we forced them to anyway. People do say no quite a lot, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they do. They do. But we, set, we calmed them down. And then we just asked them questions. There was zero planning. So... Hmm. That no, is an not, interesting bit of feedback. It is, because it's got to be, you know, if you hit them with pre-cla- pre-planned questions, it gets really quite boring. And yeah. you know, Well, they could be pre-planned that, that we've thought of. <laughs> In yeah. advance. Not told them. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know. To be fair, whenever you've got Dave in an interview, there's always an element of randomness that comes creeping <laughs> not, in. Why, yes, I'm glad you asked me that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure it's the planning so much as the locations often, because, I mean, 
at, standing outside the toilets on the mm. Eurostar or in a pub, and it adds a little bit of <laughs> something. Something. Did you know say quoi? We have done interviews in lots of different ways. I mean, we've yeah. had Matthew Paul Thomas here in my kitchen. Yeah. Yep. We've had the two Allens and Simon Phipps in Our Studio house, A yeah. at your yeah. house. Studio. We've had people on the phone like <laughs> Matt Griffin and. Um, Mark Shuttleworth. Mark Shuttleworth on the phone. We've Mark interviewed people. Our house. <laughs> <laughs> and we've had um, interviews with people in my hotel room at UDS. <laughs> yep. um, the guy from uh, Freescale uh-huh. and also Ack and Matt Griffin was done in my hotel room. Mm-hmm. Um, so you we, know, we did a load at UDS in Mountain View in what was essentially a broom cupboard. <laughs> yes, yeah, about eight people crammed into it. <laughs> that got a bit hot and sweaty, sweaty didn't it? Did. It did. So yeah. really, what we're saying Quite is that it. you're lucky that they get done. Yeah, yeah. And we don't do a huge amount of editing. Simon does all the, the, the lift, heavy Sublime lifting on the editing, him. but yeah. in order to keep our workflow light, we don't edit. Mm. As you can probably tell from listening, to the it's show. tricky because none of us are journalists. We don't. No. We're, we're you know. Uh, and cuts a little whatever insane. we do it's not going to appeal to everybody a lot of people got a lot out of the interviews but not everybody so yeah. you know yeah. we'll take it on board but yeah well that's it's good yeah, well, no, we it appreciate was, it feedback. was positive totally. feedback yeah. so that's good we are getting better yeah practice so makes perfect yeah he said the UDS interviews were a huge improvement and those are Absolutely. the most recent ones we've done so yeah. that must be good cool. we'll take that as a pat on the back yeah let's just not go downhill from there <laughs> We had some feed camp from Og Camp. Sorry, feed we had camp. some feed camp. <laughs> feed camp, great just, idea. Just Let's coming go. off the Let's back of the professionalism comment. We, uh, <laughs> <laughs> practice makes perfect. Right, uh, we had some feedback from Og Camp, or about Og Camp, um, which is all two months ago now. But this is the first time that we've had four of us together since, uh, since Og Camp, mm. which is really quite scary. Um, someone commented on our blog asking if we really use the first eight minutes of the live show for thanking people. Yes. Uh, to which we said, yes. Yes, we did. we did. Thank you for listening. Um, those, uh, <laughs> thank those, you for leaving your comment. Thank you for leaving your comment. No, those you. are all the people who really do actually make that event happen. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Some of them are sort of commercial sponsors. Who You're not going to list cash. them now, are you? No, no, no. But I'm saying some of them are commercial sponsors who gave us cash. Some of them gave us equipment, and some of them just gave their time. So, mm. yeah, they deserve some thanks. Yeah, come along, and then you can fall asleep during the actual live first eight minutes and wake up for the rest of it. Yeah. At least it's better than the twenty odd that we did. Um, on the first dog camp, doing a that was raffle. The raffle. <laughs> yeah, we did a raffle for 20 minutes Whose last idea time. was that? It's yeah, down come to on, eight. it's getting better. Raffle that was good fun. fun. The raffle this year was brilliant. <laughs> but we didn't record yeah. it. We, we did record it. We haven't released oh. it. Oh. Did we? Yeah. Oh, oh. I didn't know we exist. recorded that. I think it, I'm going to bootleg it in about 20 years' it time. It was really quite funny, actually. There'll be bands touring across Europe who'll be listening to our raffle. Us getting running drunk. around like loonies with books to people <laughs> at the back of the room. That was but we started a trend. The Smugcast now do on air. Recorded raffles. They give away slightly different prizes than we did, though. Yeah, I'm not going to ask on a family show. No, probably, probably okay. best not to. Okay. Nigel Verity said... The Black E was uh, certainly a more suitable venue than the hotel in Wolverhampton uh, last year. However, I think that if you do it again, you should consider a venue in the south, yeah. i.e. striking distance <laughs> from London. <laughs> striking distance from Alan's house. <laughs> <laughs> Alan's house. No. Uh, we have to recognise that the centre of gravity of the UK uh, population is in the <laughs> south, and so that is presumably where we'll find the biggest concentration of floss enthusiasts. There's really? a can of worms. Genuine email, not written yeah, or made up by write, us. Yeah, we didn't write that, it, despite all of us living in the south we yeah and a couple of people have said please do it in the south next time um, the fact is, is fine. the first year but, we did yeah. it we were piggybacking off of lug radio so yeah. Wolverham- we can't yeah, exactly say after- <laughs> we couldn't exactly say after wolverhampton right all of you come down south now yeah. and then the in uh, this year with um it being done in liverpool we were doing a joint thing with um Dan Lynch's Rat Hole Radio the yeah, night before, which was and Liverpool. he was organising loads of stuff in Liverpool, so yeah, it, it made, made sense, sense for him to, to be give local. him even more to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but also, it's quite nice to alternate or something because yeah, yeah. otherwise, all the people in the north have to pay to come down south, and it's so not cheap to, ha- to do something no. in London. No, you know, that oh, no. I, I probably would say I don't think Old Camp will be in London ever. No, ever. No, absolutely not unless again unless somebody there's a big sponsor. Although to yeah. um, <laughs> find us a venue, Nigel does say within striking distance of London. I'm not sure what yeah. that means. But you even know. striking distance of London. Yeah. Uh, well, an, hour, an hour on the train. Let's say an hour on the train gets you South to here. So, yeah. Or your house. <laughs> or Camp France. Excellent. Come up with a yeah. venue and let us know. And Simon, then we can use it. Simon, are you an hour from London? Can we have it at your house? <laughs> do oh, it. That's a good idea. Do it on uh, the Salisbury uh, Plain. <laughs> <gasps> Or <laughs> camp the henge edition. <laughs> Get the yeah. camp mini henges. You are not coming into the stones, going. <laughs> Tony Webster wrote in. 
The general atmosphere was great, and given the re- resource constraints, the organisation I thought was excellent. Oh. Get that? Oh, yeah. excellent. excellent. My only criticism, which I don't know how you get round, is that there was usually a clash for the talks we were interested in. Any chance the transcripts, slides, videos, etc. of the talks being put up somewhere at some stage? Yes. Some of Dorbers, them. Matt Daubney, has put up some of the talks on his Blip TV account, which I think we're linking from from the OddCamp website. Yeah, dorbers.blip.tv. Yeah. I'm uh. probably out of date with that. So. Hmm. But he certainly had we'll a few up there. Try and update that. Maybe we could um, email all the people, because we know who talked, if we could ask them for their slides, and maybe we could put them on the, sh- on the, on the website. That's, That's true. And the talk host chaps did, did uh, video the main stage talks. Um, they're still I don't think working they're, they're on still it. Working on. I haven't seen anything released stream. yet anyway, so... Hopefully they will... Um, I'm just worried. I've just loaded up Matt's um, account and I think it's about to start playing. Yeah, so he's got the keynote from Simon Phipps up there and the, pa- this, the panel discussion. And my Mumbuntu. And your Mumbuntu, well. yeah. Yes. So uh, I think those are quite a good selection there. But yeah, there's always a bit of a conflict. You can't please everybody. So many good quality talks, you can't get to them. Well, I think that's a sign of success. It is. If there's loads of talks and you're conflicted as to which ones you want to go to, that's much better than staring at a page and thinking... Well, there's yeah. nothing really I want to go to. Might as well go to the pub. Yeah. <laughs> My mum recommended Mumbuntu. Oh, thank you. My mum recommends it as well. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing well in your target demographic, then, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> two out yes. of two mums who've tried it. <laughs> Simon Benny added, I attended Old Camp and had a really great time. I just wanted to say thank you for all your hard work that you put into the event. It was really great. Are there any more T-shirts or mugs left that we can buy? Funny, you should ask I, that. I think all the t-shirts went, didn't they? Yes. There may, there may be a handful left, but basically I think they've all gone. Katie did a fantastic job of she flogging did, yeah. everybody a t-shirt, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but there are a few mugs left. And Dan, I think, is trying One to One of them's in Liverpool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Dan, I think, is working out how to how he can arrange shipping. Um, I think Dan's mum is going to be uh, employed <laughs> to, uh, to take them all down to the post office on a regular basis. But yeah, so uh, listen to Linux Outlaws, I guess, and hopefully he'll, uh, he'll be able to tell you about that at some point. Mm-hmm. Listen to us too. Yeah, yeah, of course. But, you know. <laughs> Everybody unsubscribes in order to <laughs> yeah. find out about mugs. Because you can only listen to one podcast at a time. Yes. Yeah. But, you know, listen to Linux Outlaws. Hopefully they'll have some news sooner or later. And that's all your feedback. That's it for this time. We'll be back in a couple of weeks, but in the meantime, you can send us all your feedback or voicemail or tweet or dent or whatever via the huge list of means that are listed on our website, podcast.ubuntu-uk.org. Yeah, see you next time. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Love you. Bye. Adieu.